All right, so you know how I've been harping on you to put that unequal thing after your t-test I command. Well, let me explain where that comes from now. Turns out when you go to a t-test, you have two types you can choose from. The traditional t-test assumes equal variances. That's what it's going to say on your output. Equal variances, remember variance is just standard deviation squared. So assuming equal variance is the same as assuming equal standard deviations in the two groups we're comparing, in the two populations. We could formally first do a hypothesis test to test this, where our null is the underlying standard deviations are equal at the population level versus the alternative that they're not. But I don't like the idea of having to do one hypothesis test just to choose the next one. You might say, well, John, why can't we just compare the observed standard deviations? Well, remember, just like sample means, our standard deviations from samples are estimates of an underlying truth. So just because these are not equal to one another in value does not mean that the underlying standard deviations are not equal. So we can't just look at things. What you see is not necessarily what you get in statistics, and that's why we're doing all this stuff anyway. There is a slight modification. The traditional test assumes equal standard deviations, but there's a slight modification to allow for unequal variation. This modification adjusted degrees of freedom for the test uses a slightly different standard error computation than the one for the test assuming equal variation. And it actually uses the computation I gave you before. Here's my take. If you want to be truly safe, quote unquote, if you only had one t-test to take with you on vacation, then you may as well take the one that allows for unequal standard deviations or unequal variances. This actually works well in all situations. And what do I mean by that? Well, here's, here's what happens. If the underlying population level standard deviations are equal, then both the approach assuming equal standard deviations and unequal give valid confidence intervals, but the intervals by the approach assuming unequal standard deviations are slightly wider and the p-value is slightly larger. So the, it gives a slightly more conservative, less efficient approach the one assuming unequal standard deviations is if the truth is that the underlying population standard deviations are equal. But it doesn't miss the boat. It's just more conservative than the approach that assumes equal variation. However, the converse is not true. If the underlying population level standard deviations are not equal, then the approach assuming equal variances or standard deviations does not give valid confidence intervals and can actually give confidence intervals that severely undercut the goal coverage of 95%. So the one that works best all of the time, regardless of the truth about the underlying population standard deviations, is the approach that assumes unequal standard deviations. Here's that approach again applied to the weight change and diet example. Here's the approach that actually assumes equal standard deviations. The only difference you need to make in the command is you leave off that comma unequal. The default is to assume equal standard deviations. I want you to compare the results from these two. What you'll see is that the confidence intervals cover very similar territory and the inference is the same, but the p-value from the one assuming unequal variances is slightly higher. And here is the same comparison. Here's the t-test assuming unequal variations for the LDL cholesterol change drug type example. And on this slide here, we have the one assuming equal variances. So again, you'll see there's very little difference in the inferences you would make. And in most situations, that's the case with similar sample sizes. But when you get into less balanced sample size situations, you start to see a difference. And the one that works best all the time, again, is that one assuming unequal variation. So that's the one I'd advise you to go with in your professional statistical life.